Welcome all to the Chemical Engineering Thermodynamics 2 course of the B.Tech Chemical Engineering degree program. I am Pierre Naren uh, from the Chemical Engineering Department of SCBT Shastra. Uh, I am going to have a series of short video lectures. What I mean by short, this is roughly of uh, 10 minutes to maximum of 15 minutes on different topics, different assortment topics on uh, concepts related to the chemical engineering thermodynamics 2. This is the first lecture in that series. Uh, now these uh, video lectures or the video recordings uh, uh, would be more of a semi-structured type where it, at times I would use a PowerPoint videos and sometimes it would be live uh, recording as I write on a digital pad so that uh, to give an experience or uh, for an asynchronous better learning. Now in this lecture 1 uh, we are going to set the stage for why thermodynamics 2 should be learned by chemical engineering. Now the reason for this introduction lecture is before learning any course, before learning any uh, topic in a course or before learning a subject at large, we need to learn why we need to learn the subject. So, it is very important to learn why we learn rather than learning what is to be learned. If we are not convinced on why we have to learn a particular subject with in connection with a larger domain or a degree program, then I think uh, it would not be fruitful uh, to learn just the knowledge component related to that. Hence, in this lecture 1, we will set the stage uh, a firm foundation for why thermodynamics 2 is very essential for chemical engineers. As the video lectures are going to be short, I am going to deliver this in multiple parts. So, this is just the first part of this lecture. That is what you see here as L1.1. So, let us go to the question and let us try to un unearth uh, why a chemical engineering a student, why an aspiring chemical engineer need to learn thermodynamics too. Now, to understand this question, it is very important for us to know what is the objective or function of a chemical engineering discipline at large for the human society. What I mean by that is, we as uh, practitioners of chemical engineering, we as belonging to the discipline of chemical engineering, what a chemical engineer is expected to do in a society. When I say what is expected to do in a society, I mean in terms of the human existence, in terms of human needs, the basic needs, in terms of our wish list or it could be in terms of the luxury items that uh, any human being naturally wishes for as part of this existence in this earth. What is uh, the expectation from chemical engineering? Now we need finished goods, be those finished goods for basic needs like for example clothing food shelter. We need finished goods as part of our requirements. We need finished goods as part of our wish list or it could be part of a luxury. right? Now, these finished goods by themselves are not there. They are made from some compounds. They are made from some chemicals. Now, these chemicals themselves again may not be available. They are made by something called uh, raw materials, right? So, these raw materials are converted to compounds or what we call as products which are then transformed to finished goods. Let me uh, give an example. If I ask for a finished good, now uh, somebody might say a finished good as a paint because we need a paint to paint our walls, to paint our home. For someone, bike is a finished good because it helps in the transportation of a person from one place to an another place. To some other person, it could be car, right? So, all these what I list here are belonging to the category of finished goods or these are consumer, sorry, these uh, or uh, consumer items 
this consumer items or what I call it as finished goods referred here but these consumer items are not available by themselves they are made by a number of chemicals that goes into this the number of chemical compounds right that are going to the that are going to this finished goods and these chemical compounds or which are also called here as uh, desired products are themselves made from some raw materials or which we otherwise call as feedstock in uh, some places or we say it is like starting compounds right let me give an, another example to explain what we now see on this slide let's take that uh, cooking is a very essential basic need is it clear so that means uh, we uh, this is a basic need for all human existence that if we don't uh, necessarily consume just uh, raw uncooked food we need cooking so we need to cook the food and for cooking our uh, whatever the food that we want to consume we require some utensils so, so that means there's we need some cookware items and one of those broad cookware items that we conventionally use now is the non-stick cookware items because we don't want water to stick to it we want easily to wash so that means we have certain requirements we have certain uh, wish list based on which we need our cooking utensils to be non-stick so that it is easy for us to use or probably it is easier to wash and so on and so forth this non-stick uh, now uh, is very popularly known by a trade uh, trade name that you see as Teflon right now what is Teflon Teflon is a chemical compound by name PTFE polytetrafluoroethylene now as you see this word this is a polymer so this is a polymer of this monomer compound which is tetrafluoroethylene now this tetrafluoroethylene itself is made from chloroform which is uh, uh, CHCl3 this is trichloromethane right and this chloroform indeed can be made by two different routes as you see here one can follow the methane route so you can have you can have start with methane so methane can be made to chlorinate it to form methyl chloride which is on subsequent chlorination will give you to dichloromethane and trichloromethane with this chloroform and uh, if you chlorinate this this is what will give to ccl4 or carbon tetra uh, chloride the second route to make the same chloroform is the methanol route so where methanol on uh, reaction with hydrogen chloride can again form methyl chloride and this methyl chloride again once again goes chlorination to form uh, dichloromethane and then pro then trichloromethane which is chloroform and then to tetrachloromethane so that means if we need this end product let's say we need these utensils which are non-stick which has a teflon coating so suppose if i say this this is my end product this is my consumer item or this is uh, uh, this is a finished good that i am thinking of for this i need to make this chemical this chemical itself comes from this chemical which is like pari tetrafluoroethylene and tetrafluoroethylene which is a monomer for this and this chemical is made from chloroform and chloroform itself is made let's say for example methane or from methanol so if we need to make chloroform let's say uh, uh, from either any of these routes either a methanol route or a methane route what other information you look for right so can you think on so you would be requiring some more information just the name of chemicals is not sufficient right for you to build a plant if you want to build a plant to manufacture chloroform so that whatever you get it as a chloroform you might sell it to somebody else who is uh, making it to tfe tetrafluoroethylene and probably that person is selling to somebody else who is making to ptfe and probably he is giving to somebody else who is making cooking ware utensils so that there can be a ptfe coating so this may be a long chain before it actually reaches the consumer as a good but if you want to build a plant so that means if uh, if a plant has to be built uh, for production of let's say chloroform we can take any example in this uh, uh, in this chain also we can take chloroform tfe or ptfe but i'm just taking 
like one example for illustration so if i want to make uh, uh, if you want uh, to construct if an f want to erect a plant for the production of chloroform what you will look for what are the information that you will look for can you think on this uh, for a moment i don't need to restrict it anything to do with the thermodynamics because uh, i have put the title as chemical engineering thermodynamics whatever comes to your mind jot it down let us list some of these items and then we will take this uh, discussion forward and this need not be only with respect to the chloroform you can make it very generic to change any given raw material or a starting uh, compound so this is a starting chemical compound if it has to be transferred to any other product uh, which is a different now chemical compound so this could be any anything this need not be singular this could be plural and here again it could be plural because you need not have a single product you can have multiple products also coming over there so if you want to take a chemical and convert it to an another chemical right what are the different information that you look off this is what i want you to think so in the time that you think we will take a break for the discussion and we will continue in the next part of this lecture jotting down on some of the possible information that is required if you want to build a plant to manufacture a chemical thank you for uh, uh, watching this part 1 l uh, of lecture 1 so this is l 1.1 we will meet in l 1.2 thank you i am naren again signing off from shastra